this moment. Audience, thank you so much for joining us here today. And we have a very special guest with us. And he is none other than Joe Doyle. He's a screenwriter, he's a photographer, and he's an award-winning filmmaker. Welcome to the Meticulous Moments podcast TV show. Joe, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. We're going to go into a lovely session today, and we want to learn more about you. You know, this session is about you. It's about putting focus on who you are and the things that you do uh, that inspire us. So I, I, I noted that when we talked on our virtual coffee that you had a very, very good upbringing. You know, you had a good family. You had great parents. You have great parents. And you had this dream to become, um, you know, a filmmaker, a director, a screenwriter. Tell us about that. How does it feel, looking back, to notice and to note and to know within yourself that you achieved that dream? You actually went out and you did it. You're living that dream. Well, I mean, it, it feels very good. I mean, I wouldn't say I've fully successfully achieved it yet, you know, but um, slowly, surely we, we, we're getting there, I think. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, project-wise, I mean, you, you've won awards. And uh, what did you win awards for? You know, which films, uh, which scripts, what did you win awards for? Uh, it was my first short film as a director. I won an, uh, an award of distinction from the uh, Canada Shorts Film Festival, if I'm remembering correctly. Fantastic. And that, yeah, that, that, was, that was it. That was the one, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful congratulations on that you know when we discussed oh, your college you. year uh you told me about you know the the courses that you did and that it came to a point where you kind of lost interest you know it, it went into radio and that wasn't really what you wanted to do tell the audience how that worked and what did that lead you to where did you go from there well, the uh, the course I was doing in college was a uh, creative media production, which uh, had a range of things from film, TV, radio. But uh, radio seemed to be quite a primary focus, and I wasn't very interested in that, and a lot of my classmates weren't either. So um, when I got to the third year of the course, radio seemed to be the the main thing that we were going in for, and I just decided to just get a bunch of friends together and make a short film and. That's the one that I mentioned previous that won the award at the in the festival in Canada. So yeah. that was kind of the start of it all, really. Oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, when you decided to, you know, not go into the radio part of it, did you expect that your first project would do so well? Or were you surprised when it came through and you not were like, all, no. wow, <laughs> not... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was very surprised, yeah. And what did your parents say? The, I um, mean, the, the, the film. Oh, my my parents were were very happy, very happy. I mean, I think they had the same thought that I did. That it was kind of just um, more like a hobby rather than a, a serious career choice. But when the film won awards, they were very happy, and you know, and, and they've been very supportive ever since, which is great. I, I have names here that you gave me, Eternal Gazer and Permanence. And we want to know, mm. you know, what, what are they about? What's the plot? What's the setup? Well, um, External Gazer was a science fiction film about um, a woman who ends up sort of trapped in a, in a virtual reality sort of simulation, which is quite cliche, but, you know, we were all 17 at the time, so <laughs> it's understandable. And um, Permanence was a uh, time travel film, which the the intention was I wanted to make a film where when once it ended, a lot of people would have sort of questions about what was real, what wasn't real, what you know that sort of thing. But I think I think I was too young at that point to really tackle that sort of thing. But so you know, maybe maybe again sometime in the future. I like that. I like that you're making me think of a series that I'm currently watching with my son. And it's about time traveling. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called The Legends of Tomorrow. And it's got all these characters. Yeah, in, it, yeah. yeah, from Flash and Arrow and all these characters together. They they combine this team. 
Um, you know, talking about time traveling films, that takes a lot of work, I'm sure, because now you yeah. have to go on to the one scene and then you have a flashback and then you're back in the future. Is that a tenacious task to write a script like that? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, the script went through a few rewrites, so I I made sure that it made sense. But um, once we finished the film and everything, I don't think it flowed together as well as I'd hoped. But yeah. again, with these early films, for me, it was sort of more like like a sort of training rather than something serious that I want to put out to the world and show people, oh, this is this is the type of films I want to make. You know, it was sort of more like, you know, let's get some experience under our belts and just do this because we're all just a a bunch of friends making it it wasn't super professional or anything like that but you know I, I enjoyed the experience of doing them very much I like that I love that and I wanted you know always I like to kind of pick uh, brains you know I like to ask questions that that make the audience think a little bit but you know we all have this mantra or we all have this way of getting our ideas of putting our creativity out there and we all have a vehicle for doing so for me personally i like to meditate i like to hike i get the most wonderful ideas when i engage in those activities sometimes i'm in the middle of a sparring match in the dojo and i'm fighting but my mind is you know on a project that i'm going to do because that's how i know I stay in that flow, you know, I'm not uh, getting stressed. I'm just uh, either singing a song in my mind or I am creating a formula or a, a project. Uh, what is your way of getting new ideas? What do you like to do? Uh, for me, I mean, ideas come to me when I'm more so sort of on my own, thinking about things or watching a movie, playing a video game, reading a book. But other, so there have been times as well where I've been with my with my sort of filmmaking friends and we'll kind of just throw ideas at each other. And sometimes I'll get a call saying, Oh, I had this idea and then we'll talk about it. And then, you know, maybe sometimes that snowballs into making a, an, an entire short and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting. And it's, it's wonderful, you know, that every, every person on the team has their role to fulfill. I think that's the beautiful thing about creating is that everybody has their capabilities, their strengths. And when you put all of that together, it really blends into something beautiful. I have watched movies, I've watched short films, I've watched series. And it's amazing for me always not to just watch it, but also to think what happens behind the scenes. How did they get to that idea? Who, you know, is the screenwriter? what they must have thought when they put that line in or chose that character because they do it so well. What's your favorite part of the process? Uh, my favorite part of the process is definitely uh, shooting. Uh, yeah. Pre-production I find is, is quite slow and meticulous and I'm not very good at that. And so I, I enjoy the shooting part the most because I, I feel like I'm at my most creative when I'm being improvisational and, sort of you know spare of the moment sort of things is what I feel like I'm better at rather than planning things weeks in advance and then sticking to those ideas it, it doesn't really work for me I'm a, I'm a lot more spontaneous than than that yeah and I think that's where the magic comes from is the spontaneity you know it's good I like yeah, I that I, I think it's it's like it it makes a combustion you know like that spontaneity and the excitement and the passion that everybody has does that really brings the end result? Um, I want to ask you if you had to, if you had the opportunity to right now go and sit down and watch a movie of your choice, what movie would that be? Which one would you choose? Uh, I would choose uh, Heat, directed by Michael Mann with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Uh, I've never watched that one before. What is it about? Uh, Al Pacino is a police officer and Robert De Niro is a bank robber and there's sort of like a very uh, cat and mouse sort of story <laughs> well shout out to Al Pacino and Robert De Niro you have uh, two fans That's here yes. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to I'm going to watch that definitely I, I have to say the other should, day, yes. I have to say the other day I watched The Glass Onion I don't know if you've watched that before oh my goodness it was a very, very good movie. The plot, 
like the plot yeah. twists in between. I I am yet to look up who the screenwriter was, but that was amazing. It was just it was something that will always stay with me. Uh, it's got something of everything, you know. There's comedy, there's drama, and uh, the the actors were cast so well that it it really stuck with me. Let's talk a little bit about your photography because you mentioned that you do it as yes. a hobby. Um, but I believe that you've met some pretty interesting people while doing photography. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, the uh, the photography started when I was directing music videos in lockdown. I was directing a video for a rapper and he said to me, would you mind taking some photos while we're on set? And I said, yeah, sure. And I did it with my phone and and I was quite surprised with what I got, quite pleasantly surprised. So uh, I ended up speaking to my dad, who's a professional photographer in his own right. And uh, he ended up buying me a camera for my birthday, and I've I just completely fell in love with with the art of it because with filmmaking it's very collaborative. There's a lot of people involved, and I'm I'm not very much I'm not a social creature, so you know to work to do photography and just it's just you and a camera it was yeah. very attractive to me. Yeah, yeah, and and you know if you had to say because we meet so many people, Joe, you know I. Oh my goodness, I'm a people's person. Like I'm out there, you know, always between the people. But I also have this thing where I love to be alone at certain times. You know, I want to do the hiking on my own and I want to do the meditation at some location on my own. But there are people along our way. You know, we shake hands with a lot of people in our lives. But there, there are, there's a handful, uh, there's a few that, you always remember, right? There's a few that really, they made that impression on you. It was, or it was just exceptional to work with them and you always cherish those memories. Who would you say was someone like that that you you worked with or you met or, you know, you, you did a project with, but they were like, the, the moment you guys connected, it was like you always remember them. Who would that person be to you? Um, I would say for uh, filmmaking, the last uh, short film I did, which is in post-production, uh, I ended up working with Daniel Craig's stunt double, a guy oh. called Gordon Alexander, who is just an incredible talent. He helped me so much with directing actors and action scenes and that sort of thing. So, And I'm a huge James Bond fan as well. So to meet Daniel Craig's stunt double was, was a huge honour. And um, photography-wise, I worked with um, the drummer of a band, called Will and the People, a guy called Charlie Harmon, who was the first guy who um, let me phot photograph him sort of in a professional manner. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to him for that. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm also a Daniel Craig fan, and I've got good news for you now. Yeah. I know you're going to watch that movie. Daniel Craig is in The Glass Onion. You have to watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's talk about The Perfect Day. You know, Joy, uh, uh, Joe, the, the joy of life, happiness, that's really the culture at Meticulous. I believe that when, and this is my life philosophy, I believe that when we are having fun, when we are joyous about what we do, we do it so much better, right? That's, that's something I always instilled when I worked in the corporate world, in the teams that I worked with, uh, relating to them, uh, getting to know them knowing what makes them happy so that their creative juices can flow so that they can enjoy what they do and everybody reaches their goal. Now, I want to ask you, what is the perfect day? Let's say you could create the perfect day for yourself, for your family, you know, for your loved ones. What would the perfect day look like for you, for instance? Um, that's a good question. Um I'd probably say sort of either going out to watch a great film or going to the pub and enjoying drinks, or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it's an interesting question. It's hard to hard to say what would what the perfect <laughs> day would be, but yeah. Absolutely true. It is a difficult question. I ask myself that regularly because I believe we have to develop personally and professionally. So I ask myself the easy and the pleasant questions, but I also ask myself the difficult question. So sometimes when I want to ask myself a pleasant question, I'll ask myself, Juanita, what would the perfect day look like? And my answer at, the, at this 
point in time at this moment would be to go on an adventure. You know, I love adventure. And how do we get to a place, Joe? Because we, you know, we've worked with people, we've worked with projects, and we've really seen the best and the worst uh, of people. I'd say sometimes it happens, right? What's the most difficult question that you've had to ask, ask yourself? Like something that you had to face. I know sometimes when we want to face something, I do that as well. We put it off and we put it off a little bit more. But what's the most difficult question you've had to answer yourself or ask yourself? Um, again, it's a good question. I'm I'm not too sure. I'd um, I'd probably say sort of challenging myself, writing short films and working with these big crews because um. Like I said before, I'm not I'm not much of a social creature. So the big crew is thing that I find quite difficult sometimes. So I'd probably say that, yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah, you know, I I guess it you know it it it, it differs from situation to situation, and you know when we build that relationship, and I know you're not really a social creature, but I believe that you also build good relationships with people. You know, with the people you form with. And it's important that we really delve into their lives and really build strong foundations. That brings a foundation to our projects. That brings a foundation to our lives as well. I cannot tell you how many lessons I've learned from the people that I've met, from the people that I've worked with and am working with. And, uh, you know, life lessons. Let's talk a little bit about life lessons. Sometimes they are hard to learn. Sometimes they are uh, amazing you know they help us along our development of emotional intelligence and personal and professional development what life lesson stands out to you in your life um i'll say uh probably don't ever compromise on what you want to do don't let other people sort of dictate what you can and can't do you know if you want to do something don't don't compromise on it just do what you want to do. I like that. I do. I do. I was interviewed a, a few, I believe it's a few months now. Time flies by, so quickly. And um, I talked about the fact that I like to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Of course, within bounds, but I don't like to be restricted or tied down to things. You know, I think that's the creative minds that we have. We want to explore. We want to uh, fly we want to be free we want to enjoy freedom so i agree with you don't compromise and never let go of your goals and of your visions for, for the sake of someone else always be dignified towards everybody but don't change yourself because uh, you feel that you have to like um fit in with someone else's views we all have the right to our own opinions i love that let's talk about words of wisdom you know, um, I've met, I was in the ministry for 15 years. I was a pastor and I was also in the corporate world at that time. At the same time, after hours, I was also an entrepreneur. And I met amazing, amazing mentors in my journey. Some of them were my mentors for a certain period of time. Some of them have walked with me up to now. And they're still uh, there on my shoulder. Their lessons still in my ears. Uh, when I face certain decisions I have to make, did you have a mentor that instilled words of wisdom in your life that, you know, stuck with you and you've applied it in a practical manner? Uh, yeah, I had a mentor because uh, like he, was, he was a professional photographer in his own right. He's worked with a lot of bands and He's done photography for books and all sorts of things. And then whenever I have any questions about photography work or anything. Like that. Yeah, it's it's good to be able to reach out to them, right? And to have someone on speed dial and say, I have uh, this thing that I need to complete or I have this project. What should I do next? And then they're there. And that's why we all need mentors. I don't only have one mentor. I have many. And I think it's very important that we realize we'll always keep developing 
personally and professionally. And there are those who have been there, they've done that, and they want to save us the hassle of, you know, reinventing the wheel where we can just maybe pivot in some way and get the same result. So I want to give a shout out to jo uh, to our wonderful friend, uh, Stephen Satterfield, because he made this connection for us. Tell us a little bit about your, your connection with Stephen. Um, I think he reached out to me about eight or something we similar groups. And things and then you know now he's a screenwriter and um he's asking me to direct things for him. So yeah, you know, big up to Stephen for that. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we are so excited because Martin Murray is in pre production. And I'm a part of the team there. Joe is a part of the team there. And I know our good friend, our uh, homie, John Varnes the second. He's also a part of that. We've got amazing, amazing uh, people that's going to be part of that. It's currently in pre-production. So looking forward to bringing that to light and giving life to that project. Uh, it will definitely be an amazing i love the script and it's going to be an amazing movie um tell me joe what are your future plans you know do you have any upcoming projects that we can support you in what's up next um i'd say i mean currently i'm more focused on doing photography work like working with spontaneous people so sort of just call me and say oh we've got a show in two days do you want to do it and i was like yeah you know I'll do it and stuff like that uh marty murray i say is the only big sort of film project i've got coming up and um i'm not sure when we're fully going to start production on that i'm hoping sometime maybe next year uh, if i'm being optimistic yeah wonderful wonderful it's been so lovely to spend time with you joe thank you for making time for us and for sharing your experiences we value you and we're going to keep cheering you on in everything that you do and have a beautiful day thank you so much thank you so much you too speak soon bye see you later goodbye